Hey everybody, Josh at Silka here. Today with uh, something a little bit different. We've been talking a lot about lubricants and chains and things like that lately, but today I wanna talk about a real classic, uh, well now classic Silka product, the Hero Bell frame clamp. Um, we haven't done a video on this in a couple of years and really a couple of updates, things happening, but we just wanna talk this through. We were at yet another event, uh, I'm not gonna name it because I don't want anybody to go digging on the internet too deeply, but. Uh, yet another event this year where we had an athlete at the event suffer a catastrophic frame failure um, right here at the top tube for reasons that really can only be related to frame clamping. Um, if you're on Instagram, if you're on YouTube, you see this all over the place. I mean, how many like kind of bike porn videos do you see out there where people are, you know, throwing a five, seven, ten thousand dollar frame in a stand and clamping it in the top tube. It's just madness. Um, you know, even some of the things out there now around clamping uh, seat tubes are a little bit dicey. So I just want to talk this through with everybody, kind of explain the problem, explain how this uh, is a one way to solve the problem and just honestly see what you guys think about it what questions you have we sell a ton of these um, worldwide lar largely into you know major retailers things like that certain companies like REI actually require carbon fiber bicycles to only be worked on with hero bell frame clamps it reduces their liability uh, you know their risk of being sued if something were to happen and then when you go to events and you see things like a frame actively fail under somebody with what certainly looks to be clamping damage, you can really understand why a big company like REI would make a decision like that. So let's talk about first kind of how we got here and what the problem is. You know, this is our feedback sports work stand. Uh, some of my videos, we've got a park work stand. There's other ones out there, EVT. A bunch of companies make nice stands. All of them in the clamp area uh, here, and we might as well just here. All of the clamping areas in these work stands tend to be either, in the old school days, they were semicircular, right? You're clamping something round, all the seat posts were 27 to give or take a little bit. Um, it was pretty easy <laughs> to just have a round clamp. Uh, you know, these guys went to an octagonal sort of a clamp, so, you know, you're essentially able to cover six sides with the, the slots being the two open sides. Uh, I think Park has now gone to more of a kind of an offset plus minus 45 degree V. EVT is another brand that has a similar V. And what that's allowed them to do is cover a broader range of shapes, but you still struggle with one important thing that's a factor of a feature of pretty much every modern bicycle is that other than the seat tube and even some seat tubes, every other tube on the bike, almost guaranteed the top tube, is now tapered. And so not only are you not matching the shape with this clamp, but the tube is narrower to wider as it goes through the clamp. So all of those loads are being really concentrated on one end of the clamp or the other, depending on which side of the taper you are looking at. The other big thing that has happened as bikes have gotten lighter and lighter. You know, you think, think of the old aluminum, you know, the five, 600 gram Campagnolo aluminum seat post days, um, your minimum seat post insertion depth was about this much, right? And you know that could handle large uh, torque loads. You look at the modern frame of today, especially if you have some sort of compliance enabling seat post like a Cannondale Save, for example, certainly when you look at frame tubing, um, you may be as thin as like four plies of carbon fiber in the middle of a top tube. Um, you know, those stack, the plies stack thicker as you get into the joints of the frame, right? Where you, you need, um, you know, more strength and more stiffness, but you can't clamp at the joints. So where you're clamping is typically pretty minimal. And the top tubes on modern bikes are the thinnest tubes in the entire bicycle because they're really doing relatively little. So never, ever, ever, clamp a top tube, even if it's round, you can damage it. But if you really think about, you know, the shapes that you're dealing with, the tapers, uh, the wall thicknesses, I think it becomes even more clear that it's probably not a good idea. Now, let's talk about clamping at the seat tube. Um, you know, people say, well, I'm gonna rotate this this way, do this, clamp on my seat tube. Well, if it's a round seat tube, um, 
and it's consistent, you're probably okay with a clamp like this. You're probably okay with a park style clamp that clamps this way and an EVT style clamp clamps in this orientation. If you have an arrow post or similar, you cannot be clamping it on the sides. This clamps laterally. Those posts are designed to be clamped front to back. And so they are thickest. Let's pull it back in the stand. They are thickest and most able to handle that stress on their leading and trailing edges. <laughs> Okay, so you see, this clamps this way, fine for the one and a half, or maybe it's even two millimeter wall thickness uh, of the Hero Bell tube. Not fine for your top tube. Not fine for a seat tube that's an arrow shape. Not fine for an arrow seat post. All, you look at how this is clamped, it's clamped this way. All the material for handling clamping is leading and trailing edge. This clamps on the sides. Don't do it. They can and will crack. We see it with really shocking frequency. And if you talk to the bike makers, they hear this all the time, right? People calling, I need a warranty. My seat post broke. Well, that's a weird way for your seat post to break. Um, it's a real problem. So I know people are going to fill the comments with, I've never heard of this. I've never seen it. It's because you don't work in a bike shop. And you don't work with the bike manufacturers. We really see this stuff all the time. Actually, we had our friends at Ruckus Composites um, send us some images and samples. Phil can flip them up here as I'm talking. Um, they get somewhere on the order of 10 to 12 frames a week quoted to their shop for frame repair. And that's got to be a small, I mean, they're one of multiple uh, frame repair shops around the country, but also guaranteed that a pretty small number of people who break frames are repairing them. Let's be honest. So the problem is that this is paper thin, three, four plies, maybe five. Um, it's tapered, and now you're resolving torque forces. You know, you think of the center line to the, to the edge of the clamp here is about 50 millimeters. If I come out here and I'm taping the bars, I now have somewhere between a 10 and 20 to 1 leverage ratio over this clamp uh, that those forces have to be resolved in the, the material here or in the material here. You know, does a modern seat post have 80... 90 millimeters, or maybe it's 100 millimeters of minimum insertion depth, it's probably more, right? Because you need um, that surface area in here to spread those loads out, right? The longer the minimum insertion goes, the more you're spreading the loads. So this is sort of the problem we have, right? We have clamps that are still designed for steel and aluminum bikes. They're the wrong shape, and they're designed for constant um, section of the tubing, they are not designed to handle taper. So we think of what a solution looks like. We can make some sort of very complex articulating clamp um, that would still be putting load into parts of the frame that aren't meant to have any load. Um, or we can change the way we're trying to hold the bike and change the location of where we're holding the bike. So let's think through where is the maximum amount of material in the bike? It's in the joints. Okay, think of, you know, all of these seat post uh, saddle loads have to be managed somehow in the layup in this area as well as the clamping load. You are somewhere on the order of probably four to six times thicker, in terms of more carbon fiber, but better wall thickness in this area than you are in this area. Similarly, at the head tube, you've got braking forces, you know, all the cornering, lateral sprinting, all the other forces through the front of the bike are handled here. You are much thicker again, four to six times in these join areas than you are in the middle of tubing. Similar thing with seat posts. You know, all of the seat posts anymore, they're really trying to engineer in some sort of comfort. And so not only do posts oftentimes, if not always, have a minimum insertion, they also have maximum insertion because once you get up into these higher areas in the post, they're designing in thinner walls to save weight, but also for compliance. And those areas cannot handle the compression forces of uh, the seat post clamp, which tells you they also can't handle the compression forces of your work stand. Okay, so our problem is that we don't have a great consistent place to hold the bike. Um, the places that we have easy access to are the thinnest walled areas of the bike. And so how are we going to solve that? Well, Hirabel, which was not my invention or my idea, but 
a guy named Brandon Hirakawa developed it, invented it, brought it to market, and uh, we liked it so much we just bought it off of him as a concept. And we've refined it, tweaked it over the years, uh, I think to make it a little more stable, work a little bit better, a little easier to use, a little faster to load and unload. I know some people just like the speed of, you know, clamping it quick. You know, I hear that with bike shops all the time. Oh, it saves me so much time to just clamp it. Well, you know, the three seconds you save might cost you hours of paperwork if you clamp it and you crack it, uh, not to mention the money involved. So um, it takes a few seconds extra to get the bike in, but let's look at exactly how it works and what it's doing. So soft straps, you gotta loosen that guy off and you can lift the frame right out. So essentially you have these V-shaped cones here. They are rotatable to handle different geometries of tubing. So they're sort of V-shaped in one area. They've got cable reliefs in another area. They're kind of blocked out to handle more square uh, or arrow-shaped tubing in other areas. So these can freely be rotated to match the shape of your frame. And then when you put the frame in, you expand this out to actually ideally pull a little bit of uh, kind of tension all into the top tube and then tighten this guy down. It'll actually hold quite well before you even use the straps. And then we've got these soft, paint-friendly, flexible straps uh, that go over the top and hold it down. I liken this to a shoe. And the thing to think about, you know, if I gave you a shoe that was two half-round clamshells and you had to clamp your foot in that, I don't think you'd do it because it would hurt. Um, and you just think about the weird pressure and forces that would be put into your very tapered, very non-round foot if you had to clamp it into something round. So, of course, the way shoes work, we have flexible straps typically coming over the top. Um, these cones are actually soft. They're about a 70 durometer medical grade silicone, paint friendly, um, just pliable enough that the bike can really sink in. They've actually got a little bit of support structure um, on the inside under the silicone molding to give you a little bit of added rigidity. But this is really just a much, much friendlier, much more load spreading way to clamp the bike. And, you know, for the mechanics that say, oh, it takes too long to clamp, let's throw it up there. Um, it's maybe an extra working in tight quarters so I can have my camera focus on, but there you go. Maybe an extra three seconds. So there you go, the Herobel frame clamp. Why do we make it? Because we don't want to see you on the side of the road with a broken top tube or a broken seat post. Um, we don't want your bike shop to get sued because of a customer's bike failure in the field, which we see. Um, we want to save you really the time, energy, and money, protect your investment. Uh, you know, also your bike's not going to have the same value to you or to the person you're trying to sell it to if it's marked up in the top tube or even on the seat post. Um, you know, I know we all, all of us old school guys were taught, you, know, you put a shop rag in there and clamp it, but Let's be honest, that doesn't always do the job. So here we go. Why do we make it? Uh, to make your life hopefully a little bit easier, keep you a little bit safer, keep your bike in better working condition than it was before, and really to give you and your loved ones some peace of mind. Um, you know, those failures, of course, never happen at opportune times, right? They never, they never happen in the parking lot. They always happen when something serious is going on. You're sprinting, you're dropping... Um, you know, dropping into something right on your mountain bike, that's when things like your top tube let loose because they've got internal damage. So I think it also, again, just gives you a little bit of peace of mind. I'm sure there's questions. I'm sure there's going to be comments. Uh, drop it in to the uh, questions and comments below. Be sure to like, hit the subscribe button. Please tell your friends about our channel, and uh, we look forward to hearing what you have to say.